There's a story inside every smoke shop, with every cigar, and with every person. Come be a part of the cigar lifestyle at Boveda. This is Box Press. Welcome to another episode of Box Press. I'm your host, Rob Gagne. Here at Boveda, we are sitting down with Lizette Perez Criojo. Carrillo. Carrillo. I am not very good at Spanish. Lisette, thank you so much. Lisette? Lisette. 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 We are learning names today, This is folks. his icebreaker, by the way. Thank you so we much for being gracious with me. <laughs> Lisette, you are the daughter of Ernesto Perez Carrillo. Carrillo, that's Carrillo. right. Carrillo. Yes. And you guys have a very strong legacy this year, or last year, you guys won Cigar of the Year from Cigar Aficionado, number one Cigar of the Year. Yes, we're very honored by that. That, that in and of itself brings probably a lot of um, anticipation and a lot of uh, priorities and a lot of, um, what am I trying to say? You have to live up to that. So yes, how absolutely. has that affected the way you guys are operating right now? Well, interestingly enough, my father is a perfectionist. So Wonderful. it's affected us um, in a very positive sense, in the sense of getting our brand out there more, the name out there more. But in the way that he does things, it really hasn't affected much because he is the biggest perfectionist I've ever met. So every cigar has to leave there in you know the utmost quality, whether it's the number one cigar, the number four cigar, the number two cigar. We have all of those, whether it's the cigar that you know doesn't sell very much, that right. it's one that you know, he takes the same pride in one that might be a limited edition that has no potential to, to be rated, for example. It's always um, based on quality. Exactly, as some of our, our, our less popular uh, lines, it's always the same. And um, talking about the number one cigar of the year, that cigar was supposed to be released in 2016. And we were here all at the trade show. Why did it and get held the, up? Well, all the samples were there. And of course, we budget everything accordingly and think, okay, so we're gonna sell this much this year. Um, and basically, uh, he decided no. He tried a couple of the- Your dad held off on bringing it last year. Here, it was here. No, 2016, they were here. Oh. And he had already aged the, the, the wrapper for quite some time because that cigar it works with a, with a tercio. It's a tercio system. Uh, where the the wrapper is kept for a few years um, under certain conditions, and uh, it's just a very particular method that he has used for for this. So very unique line. to this cigar. Yes, and so he brings it here, and we're thinking, okay, it's going to be perfect. So he tries it, and all of a sudden says, it's not ready. Here comes the perfectionism, right? He so says, no, this we're is all not looking, it. All of the reps are all pumped up about this. Everybody knows about it. And he's just like, yeah, we're not giving this out. Oh my and, gosh! And I, I'm I'm responsible for the financial aspect of the company. And You're like, uh, you I can imagine. We gotta sell this. Yes. But he, you, said, he no. says no. no. So it's not about dollars. No. It's said, not about I said, cents. Dad, this is this is pretty serious. I mean, are you sure? He's like, I'm not giving this Because it's gonna be a out. financial impact. Yeah. He's and like, you're I'm not seeing the numbers out. already in your head. So I don't care. We're not giving this out. Wow, so, character and, and he's like, this has my mom. I mean, I'm on one side of the band. I designed the band, by the way. So you know, oh, to designer. him, that was a very like special component of it. You sure. know how much time the whole family spent. It wasn't just him designing something or me designing something. It's like, a, it's kind of like a culmination of all of our efforts. Yeah, everyone has to agree upon which it. had which is it's based on like Storia packaging. Okay. What we did was that we changed some of the the colorations and and, and all that on sure. the, on the packaging. So he said, yeah, this is not ready, and uh, it is what it is. But it was mainly because of the blend. It wasn't ready smoking he, didn't, he, he felt that it didn't age enough. And like there huh. were some issues where he was just not happy. So now he went back a year later, and he said, okay, two now years. it's ready. Two, two years later. Yes. So it was finally released in March 2018. Wow, and two more years, and you're you're still. I'm sure those yeah. two years you're going. Okay, we need it. We still what? need it. We what? still want what? it. What? And then uh, you know, every time I go to the factory, I check on it. You yeah. Know, and Is it ready yet? Is it ready there. yet, Dad? It's still there. And um, wow. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it was it was an incredible experience. So it's good to hear though that your dad and you and everyone is focused on what we're getting at, at the end result because we put our hard earned dollars into this, right? Yes. We're spending 10, $12 a stick, maybe 15, almost Absolutely. 20. Absolutely. So if we don't get that quality at the end of the day, it just, like you said, it just ends up hurting you guys or like your dad feels 
and then you can't sell it anyways. Yes. So it's very, very good to hear. And that. he's on the factory floor. I mean, he that is he loves the factory. He is there all the time, and um, I I do recall like sometimes you know we were talking a little bit about differences, um, and. You know, I'm seeing a lot of like the, the that bottom line on the income statement, you know, and it's kind of like, OK, well, we need to do this. We need to. He says you can't rush it. You can't rush okay, it. OK, so you're because you're so focused on on maybe the sales and the and the uh, financial part of it. So you're that's part of your job through the company and your dad's worried about the quality and making sure and that I'm worried the about the quality is yeah, not to say it's, you're it's not just, when I'm talking about quality, I'm talking about that extra five days. Right. I'm not that might or might not really make a difference. Right. You get it for him. It makes it a difference. Doesn't matter. It has to be perfect. It so has that's to leave there. How you guys are a little bit different is where he's. Well, no, I like it perfect too, but he his standards are even just mm. at another right. level. You know. You're and dealing it, with and with, and with the guy said, that says. What do I want to aspire to? I kind of want to aspire to that. You know, like when am I going to get there? Is it going to take me another 20 yeah. years? Whatever it is, you know, he's t he's basically told me this is something where, you know, the more time that you spend doing something, the more you learn from your own mistakes and the better you want to get at it. So I've seen myself more and more. I mean, I'm a, I'm a lawyer by training. So wow. I've seen myself more and more in the in this actual industry, learning from him, like the things to look for, you know, like even in a cigar, when you look at a cigar, how is it supposed to look? How does he want it? to? What look? is he telling you to look for? What just the colors, the, the consistency in the wrapper, for example, the way it's, it, you know, you feel it, learn how, learn how it should feel. Like there's no, for example, sometimes there might be um, like little pockets in it that yeah, somebody squishy. might think, squishy. yes, and somebody might think, hey, this is going to affect the smoke. Sometimes it does, but there's might be a little one where you might think, oh, you know, they didn't pack it, you know, correctly. They, they it's a natural made it. product, right? It's a natural made product. And he said, well, you know, a lot of people might not know that this is going to smoke really well. But guess what? It's not going in a box. It's not leaving the factory. I mean, really? I'm telling you, that's how committed he is to quality. Wow. And I, I'm telling you, I mean, like even with packaging, for example, um, we are redesigning um, some of our boxes to go from 24 to 20. Why and is that? Why you want to go from just shelf space, just friendlier? Okay, you know, so you just, want to help your retailers out, right? By saying, hey, there's yes. a little, little yes, less shelf Yes, and he, and he always space. had like a little vision with that particular series. These are elite series that he wanted it to look a certain way. And for yeah. the last two years or three years, he hasn't really been happy with it, you know. But didn't want to take that extra step and making those little, you know, minor sure. changes. Thinking I don't want to dis disrupt it. You know, it's doing really well. Right. Why? Why bother if it's you know doing so well? Uh, but then evidently it catches up with him and he can't sleep at night. And he's like, yeah, we need to make these changes. Good. And then we make them. So, so he's always evolving, always changing. Always, always. Well, listening. now the, the, that package, for example, the box, there's a label that goes on the top across from it, right? Most people break the label, open the box. Yep. Well, he doesn't like the label. I'm just talking about the little corner label, right? right? So he's like, yeah, I'm not comfortable with this. I'm not sure. Like maybe I have to, you know, redesign it. And we're all kind of like. Really? It's Over a label? label? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. So he needs to learn from you. Like at the end uh, of the day, sometimes you the think, label's not going to break. He does open up everything. quite a bit sometimes. That's you good. Know? So, so you're learning from each other. We learn from each other. As yeah. a lawyer, though, trained lawyer, do you, did you practice law? And I practiced law in New York. Have a business or work I practiced for a law in New York, yes. Um, okay. At a big law firm. And then what I did was that we sold our previous company uh, to, a, to a bigger uh, conglomerate. And that gave me the opportunity to actually do something um, that wasn't just working in a corporate law firm. And I actually work, went to work for legal aid, okay. um, which obviously pays a lot less, but was a lot more fulfilling for me. Good. So I did that. That was more courtroom rather than corporate. Sure. Um, and uh, I, I represented um, abused and neglected children in New York City. Oh, wow. So that was also That's very huge rewarding. need there. Mm -hmm. That was very rewarding. Then so I moved to Miami. So you have a compassion Miami. for that. Absolutely. Very, very compassionate, very strong about that. Mm -hmm. What, what? Now that you're, you're kind of now into the cigar industry, and your dad, is, did he? Would he be comfortable if you decided not to be in the cigar industry? Well, or? I actually grew up in the cigar industry. The, we, this is the. I would be a fourth generation. Uh, this goes back, I guess, to my great great grandfather in Cuba. So, wow, fourth generation. Mm -hmm. So I grew up uh, basically when I was five years old after school, I would go put the little bands on with my mom, put the cigars in the cellophane. So this is something that's it's been, been a family business your been whole a family life, family business my whole life. But yeah. you what you went off 
the we family business and you went to be a lawyer, did you think you were going to come back to it? Or did well, you think, I, ironically, I'm I was done at, I was with at, the family business, I'm going to do my own thing? And Ironically, I was sitting, uh, I went to Columbia Law School and a lot of the people there, you know, they, they want to go work for the Supreme Court. They want to go to like oh, yeah. the top firm. So we're going around and everyone's saying, so what do you want to be when you leave here? What do you want to do? You know, and I'm listening, oh, I want to work for this judge and I want to do this and I want right. to work for this friend. I'm like, well, I'm going to go back and run the cigar company. In you Little knew Havana. right from there? Well, no, I actually did go work for one of the big firms, but I'll tell you what happened. Well, you knew we you wanted to go back yes. to the family business yes. in cigars. Yes. But what is it that made you decide to go into law? Just intellectually. So I you, just you, wanted to learn. Yeah. You can't just, just adopt being in the family business. You have to go out yes. and express yourself yes. into what you're passionate about. Yes. And my father always inspired that in me and my brother who uh, also is one of the co-founders of the company. So now he didn't mind for you to leave no, for a little bit. No. He Did he know you were coming back or was he like, hey, if she leaves and she leaves and she, she does other things? She leaves and she goes and becomes a lawyer even totally to this fine. day. He'll be fully supportive. Like, just fully supportive. Fully supportive. He won't, it won't break his heart or anything. It like probably that. would break his heart, but he'd still okay. be fully supportive. Okay. Yeah, I would, I would be very disappointed <laughs> I if I lost break you his too. Heart. I hope so. But that's not going to happen. I mean, I do a lot of the legal work uh, for the company now. I do a lot of the marketing, the financials. I'm pretty much um, running the operations uh, on the Miami side with a lot of help, obviously. And he also um, runs the company with me. So, right. you know, I do a lot of Miami. He does a lot of factory, but we talk a Wonderful. lot. Wonderful. All the time. It's a family business. It's a family business. Being in a family business can be stressful. We all know it. If we've ever worked with a family member, heck, I don't know how some people work with their wives or their husbands. That takes a whole different <laughs> I would think game. so, <laughs> yes. So being a family business, do you guys have a written rule or kind of an unwritten rule of like, when we're together for holidays and things like that, let's not talk about business? Or is it you could kind of tell, always talked about? You could tell that we struggle with that in really? the sense of uh, we might all be sitting down, uh, like will we, like we were in Europe, um, over the holidays, for example, we might be all sitting down, just having dinner, and then my dad looks at me and I look at him, and nobody else wants us to talk about it. But it does always end up happening. It just you know, happens. Like it could be like a quick, you yep. know, hey, you know, the encore, how are the sales? Like, for example, there it was after the rating. You know, so it's really hard to yeah, say you can't we're not, shut it you off know, or, or he and I will stay back. Like sure. Everybody's walking somewhere, and he and I will stay back. <laughs> so you respect the other family members who may not want to listen to you. So you don't drag everyone in. But if you want to have a conversation, you can talk about it and then go back to the family aspect. Yes. That's absolutely, wonderful. Absolutely. So you guys have a working relationship yes. that's healthy and positive. Yes. And, and, and an understanding. Yes. And, like. and my brother now, he's doing his, he, he's running a hedge fund. He's no longer with us. He's one of the shareholders still, but he's uh, always informed. I always call him, you know, and, and ask him, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? So, so it's That's almost wonderful. like his, you know, his, his wife even, you know, she does a lot of social media. So I'll ask her for her input. Hey, what do you think about this? It's, you know, my kids, yeah. it's, 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 it's your all, kids, it's, your yeah, husband, it's everyone. It's all encompassing. Involved. Wow. Very cool. Well, many people may experience something similar to where their father or somebody in their family has a special impact on culture. And the cigar culture is essentially one of these types of industries that's very family oriented. Did you always enjoy representing the family name or did you ever get to a point where you're like, this is so much on my mind or I always have to be this representation of my family? Well, how did you feel about that growing up? I think that because I grew up so, uh, I guess, immersed in it. Right. It's, just you just take natural. it for granted. Yeah. Yes, you don't. I think that one of the the moments that that it that it hit me was, you know, the more like you're going to school and you're listening to what other kids' parents do. Yeah. And then you're kind of like, oh, I'm I'm different. This, yeah, we're all my different, parents right? Are different. You know, like we have this company here in Little Havana, and they make cigars, but nobody else is doing that. Right. You know, so I kind of were, and back then it was very few companies doing it. Right. So you kind of learn that it's a little different or people would say, that's so cool. Like even now with my kids, teachers, for example, somebody asks us like, oh, what do you do? And I tell them and she's like, oh, my gosh, that's so cool. Like right. I've never met somebody who does that. Right. You know, so totally unique. But I'm just kind of like, oh, OK. But for you, it's like, oh, no, this is what I do every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. not so, a big deal. Not a, yeah, exactly. I feel neat. I feel privileged now 
because I could look back and see right. everything that you know I was blessed with and and everything that I got to learn. Um, but it's not only that you have your own company; it's also that it's something unique. Right. It's not something that a lot of you, people. Are you doing. said a good word, learning, mm -hmm. and I'm always trying to learn, especially in this role too, how to interview people well and have a good rapport, and how do I help the company I work for and. How do I have a better marriage? And how am I more intimate with my wife on different levels, spiritually, uh, intellectually? With all that being said, when did it hit you that you probably have one of the best teachers right in front of you, that being your father, that being your family? When was that kind of like, when did that sink in? Because growing up, it's kind of muted, right? You're just, you're in it, you're doing it. Has it become more prominent now that you're slowly being more and more involved in the business or did you realize it both earlier on in your life well the first value that i think he taught me uh, very well was the value of family and just what he was willing to do for us at all times i mean there were moments where he put things on hold professionally uh, for us because he wanted to spend more time with me really so he, put that he on wanted hold. to he wanted to spend more time with my brother well, the, the time that uh, we were doing extremely well uh, before I left to law school, for example, in the sense of orders, we we're back ordered on some of our cigars for over a year. Wow. Because all we did was we had a small factory in Little Havana and we just couldn't keep up. I leave to law school and he's kind of like, okay, it's time now. He goes to Dominican Republic. So all that time, nobody's know, nobody knows that he's been thinking about this for years, but you right. know, he doesn't want to leave his little girl, what he considers to be his little girl, you know? And he's kind of like, yeah, I had so he to wait for you to leave so I could leave. Staying with the family in Miami, making the sacrifice to travel there periodically. But now he says, I can leave. He wasn't, he didn't set up a factory at all until I left. So oh, in other really? words, when you're talking about back orders for a year and he just would not do it. So once wow. I left, he set up the factory and, you know. Cause that's an opportunity to obviously grow the company, gain more revenue, but he va valued the family aspect more. So that is that something that you've taken on from your dad as well? Absolutely. Like, you really like my kids, you know, my kids are here. It's always something. And I try to include them in everything. Like, for example, I might have like a, a, a work call and my daughter's there and she'll just be kind of like, why do you have to be on the phone? Why do you have to be on the phone? And yeah, I'm like, I have to take attention the from you. Right. Well, usually if I'm not on the phone, she doesn't care. But so right, whenever yeah. I get Once on you the get phone, that call, she's 13. Like, uh, exactly. So I'm here talking to the accountant, trying to like do all these numbers in my head. And she's like, I need you to talk to me. I need you to, you know, yeah. I said, listen, did you like, you know, that, that she's actually gone vegan the last like three weeks. I go, did you like, you know, when we went shopping and I had to pay X amount for, right. you know, all this food well, that the you value, just bought. The trade off, right? Well, I it's said, hello, yeah. how do you think we do that? You know, yeah. like I need to do this. And, and, you know, over time, you know, I think she's getting it slowly but surely. But that's good as a teenager to learn that. Yeah. It is a give and take. It's yes. a balance. And I, mean, I said, this is your company too. You're not always on the phone around your daughter. No, not always. But when exactly. you do get on the phone, your daughter, would, you would like her to respect the fact right. that, hey, I do right. need to take care of this. Right. And I want to include her more than anything. I want exactly. her to understand this is yours too. And if Whether she you never work for, for it or not, it's fine. You don't have to be in the company, but it's right. also yours. Right. You know, you have to Because you're benefiting from it. Yes. We're all benefiting from <laughs> yes. it. Yes. So then, you know, most of the time she gets it. Good. So, you know, I've learned because my dad always included me. You get it? Right. Like, I would stand and he'd show me all the, the leaves and he'd be like, look, this is what's wrong with it. And I mean, I'm eight years old. And, and did I'm you enjoy out learning that? Did you, like, look yes, up to that? Like, time. to me, that's exactly what I'd be looking up to. I'd be like, oh, yes, please tell me more. But tell I me didn't more. I know who, how great he was when I was eight. Right. You take it for granted. Know that. But now but you maybe look he wasn't back. as great as he is now. Makes sense? Like yeah. I saw the progression. Right. But he was very learning. good. Always but now good. it's reached just so with all a whole that, other level. How are you trying to get the information from your dad? Are you cherishing every moment? Are you asking him more questions uh, now? Uh, well, he doesn't answer that as much as I would like. Um, sometimes because since I have that whole kind of, you know, deposition uh, way about me. He's kind of like, right. wait, wait, I'm not in a courtroom. Yeah, right, I'm not right. In a courtroom. You're like grilling on me like, why did you choose this rapper? <laughs> exactly. Why did you make that decision? Wrong decision. So no. we have someone at the factory, his name's Junior, and he's really cool about it. Like, I'll go Good. there, he'll teach me everything. So, you know? your, so your mind must be more like... It's, it is. Like and he's step more by step, artistic step by step. More, yes. yes. And and your dad might be more creative. Yes, more he'll like, be like, hey. oh, because I, I use two ligeros. I'll be like, okay, right. but why? Well, because I just do. 
No, but, but why? Yeah, you, know, you want to know why. Because it does this. But This no, is important more. to yes. you to keep growing and yes. bringing on the legacy. Yes, yes. Wow. It's a great experience. He's a he's a great guy and I've learned a lot and my kids have learned a lot from him. It's so amazing. we hope to continue, you know, in this growth process of life. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for sitting down with us. Absolutely. This has been so enlightening. For you guys out there, if you haven't tried anything from EPC, you definitely gotta put this inside your humidor. It's an amazing cigar. You can see the family heritage here and the respect that they have for giving you guys quality products. Lizette, thank you so much. Absolutely, Rob. Thank you.